Hi, this is Pat Love from Love Healing Hearts again, and we're still dealing with Matthew chapter 8. <clears throat> now, this is what I want to deal with, because sometimes we as born-again Christians, we believe that we believe until the nitty-gritty hits the fan. And when the nitty-gritty hits the fan, we find ourselves kind of in a trick bag. You, do you get me on that? Okay, I'm going to read so you get where I'm going. <clears throat> okay. Um, starting at verse, let's see here. Okay, starting at verse 5. And when Jesus was entered into Capernaum, there came unto him a centurion, not a Jew. Okay. Centurion beseeching him. And saying, Lord, my servant lieth at home sick of the palsy, grievously tormented. And Jesus said unto him, I will come and heal him. The centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou should come under my roof, but speak the word only, and my servant shall be healed. For I am a man under authority, having soldiers under me. And I say unto this man, Go, and he goeth. And to another, Come, and he cometh. And to my servant, Do this, and he doeth it. When Jesus heard it, he marveled and said unto them that followed, Verily I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, nah, no, not in Israel. And I say unto you that many shall come from the east and west and shall sit down with Abraham and Isaac and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. But the children of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. There shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. How, <clears throat> yeah, that's not that encouraging for the children of the kingdom, is it? But let me tell you what I got from that. Because sometimes God's word can say five or six different things figuratively while it's saying one thing literally. And what I got from that is there are times when people who you deem may be unworthy or you look at as something that's tainted or contaminated or maybe slow in development and you look at them and say, I don't know if they'll ever get it together because in your mind, you've got it together. You've been saved a certain amount of years. You're walking with the Lord. You're talking with the Lord. You go to church. You do all the church calisthenics and you know how to do Christian. You know how to do it. But there are people out there who don't know how to do it. They don't know how to be it. They're just real. They're real and they're real messed up. They're real and they're real broken. They're real and they really feel unworthy. But they really come to God with a true heart of repentance. And they have a lot of hurdles to climb over that you have never had to deal with. And when these people go to Jesus Christ, they experience the miraculous in ways that you never have. So while they are tainted and broken and, and messed up and underdeveloped and jacked up in so many ways, you look at their dysfunction while Jesus is looking at your lack of faith. So before you get on your religious high horse, remember, come to Jesus with the same humble heart that the alcoholic comes in. Come to Jesus with that same humility that the prostitute who really wants to come out of prostitution comes to him in. Because even though you may think your stuff don't stink, bad English, but you get me. Oh, it does to heaven. All of our stuff stinks. All of us. But those of us who know we need help. Those of us who come to Jesus, who come, bow before the Lord and say, God, you got to help me. Great deliverance comes. Great healing comes. 
I am telling you, <clears throat> there is so much power when you combine humility with faith. So much power, so much you can access in the kingdom. But for those of you who have been partakers of the kingdom for many years, you tend to become uh, complacent and comfortable. And you sit in your chair of ease or you lay in your bed of ease and wait for the coming of the Lord to come and get you. While God is wanting you to actively pursue everything he has to offer because you, like they, are still a work in progress. So I say all that to say, all of us as Christians, we need to remember from whence we came. We need not to get too comfortable. We can't get to the point where we feel like we have arrived or we just know the Lord. We have it like that. No, you don't. It's by his grace. It's unmerited favor. You didn't deserve it. You didn't earn it. With all your sacrifices and all your righteousness and all your financial offerings. No, I didn't get it. It was what Jesus did on Calvary when he died on the cross, sacrificing himself. He is the only sacrifice. And if we humble ourselves, he will exalt us in due time. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due season. Don't think too highly of yourself. Okay. I just say, God bless us all to come as the child with a bleeding, scraped knee, say, Mommy, mend me, put me back together again. God bless us to come to the Lord with a humble heart as a prostitute that's trying to escape the grip and the terror of a, of a pimp and his control and saying, God, please have mercy on me. Forgive me. I really want to change, but I need your help. When you come to God without pomp and ceremony, when you come to God without your ego, when you come to God with all your brokenness and all the things that you can't share with anybody else, you will find great deliverance. You will experience God's supernatural love for you. You will experience miraculous healing physically, mentally, emotionally, psychologically. You will experience supernatural deliverance from old ways and old habits and old dysfunctional areas of your life. And you will find that the skeletons that rattle in your closet have been silenced by Jesus Christ. God bless you as you enter in with humility and brokenness to receive of the Lord plenty so that you will not be one of those in the kingdom that grope in darkness, that are cast out into outer darkness because you thought too much of yourself. God bless you.